his picture is especially shocking. He looks like a 12-year-old, and it's hard to believe that he could kill somebody. Milton, his older brother, Jamar Milton, and Shantavius Primes Willis are accused of shooting and killing Jamil Ray and wounding Chris Fisher. Jamar and Primes Willis are both teens. They are in jail and were denied bond Tuesday, but Milton has been on the run since June 29th. Two men who encourage a toddler to drink beer and smoke cigarettes. That's the beer in that glass. These unidentified men, reportedly from Romania, laugh as they hold a cigarette to the boy's mouth. There it is. A cigarette being held to the boy's mouth, watching him chugging beer. The video was posted to Facebook by a man from Madrid who asked if anyone recognized these men, please report it so they can then send them to the appropriate authorities. Uh, this isn't funny. Listen, in terms of uh, uh, probability of alcoholism, if somebody's going to develop a drug and alcohol problem, particularly in this country, their first drink is at home and oftentimes under the supervision of their family under the name of we're teaching you how to use alcohol. Well, guess what? That's where the problems get started. You got cartoons that are, uh, have gays on cartoons like these are kids. Let kids make their own decision if they want to go that way. You know, six and seven year olds, five year olds shouldn't be turned on to gay cartoons when their mind not even developed yet. You know, what if they like how that cartoon talk? What, now you, you, you're you forcing them to be gay. You know, every, 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 every TV show is gays. They're kissing each other. Like, it's, it's out of hand. What do you think these uh, challenges are for young people that are causing so many to flock out of our churches or the Protestant religion? I believe, uh, I mean, two main things I tend to think about when it comes to that issue. I think one of, one of the first things I'll mention would be um, not being able to see a lot of godly examples in churches, um, especially in the home. For example, I mean, growing up as a young person, there'll be so many things and so many different rules, which is not necessarily bad. But then at the same time, a lot of the, the grown-ups, or sometimes they may, we may see our parents or other people who we tend to look up to, um, going against the same things that are being taught. So I think a lot of youth are looking at double standards that are taking place. And especially when the parents go in the church, profess something, then they go back home and they realize that my parents are living a different life. They say, do what I do, do what I say, but do what I do. And I believe that's one aspect that, that really is causing the youth to be able to um, divert more away from spiritual things. But another aspect, as always, we know that more and more, um, the world is putting a lot of things out there on the media. And um, more and more things are being put in place that is really trapping and ensnaring the minds. And, um, I mean, even in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4, it tells us, you know, friendship with the world is enmity against God. So I believe that just, just all the worldly things that are out there and clinging onto those things is something that can really separate us from God. That's very important. Renoir. Yes. There's topics that are being mentioned as things that might be scaring the young people away. Doctrines, service yeah. styles, relationships or society mingling with the church? What do you think about you know, that context? Now, when you ask that question, and, and now you were asking this question, it, it kind of goes together, like why young people are leaving the church, and does it have anything to do with the way churches, churches operate it? Mm -hmm. You know, many people, when they think of young people, it's like they think about, okay, you have to do some magic tricks, you have to get out your hat, and and perform some type of show and you know you have to have concerts and you have to have acting and all these extravagant things to keep the youth mm -hmm. whilst actually it's just creating an appetite for the things in the world how? like like our music mm -hmm. it, it, you how can you try to compete with the world you try to bring in world, they have songs that are literally just change the lyrics but the same bits mm -hmm. from the world and then you give that to the youth and you expect the youth to stay in the church 
by listening to this type of music. And, and, and what it actually does, it gives an appetite for what's out there in the world. The youth, they spend six days outside of church. And just one day come to church and you expect them to just to win them over by doing the same thing that the world does. And what really drew me to the church and to be grounded and to be firm in, in not leaving the church was something totally opposite from what the world was, was giving me. The, the straight Bible with, with unfiltered truth. Like, you know, just speaking the truth plainly and, and having me to understand why I believe what I believe. Not, not just some, some um, surface religion, not just an emotional religion, but a religion that, that appeals to the mind, the intellect. Because when you, because when you realize that, that love is, is based on a principle, not emotion, then you, when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like worshiping God, you don't, you don't base your, your, your experience, your religious experience on feelings anymore. It's like, okay, love is a principle, so then no matter if I feel down, if I feel this, if I feel that, I will still love God at the end of the day, just like a husband and wife. I'll still love my wife if I don't feel happy. Right. So you need to give the youth something more than emotionalism. That's a, that's a very, very good point. Um, morning. Yeah, because um, you see, emotion should not be driving the driving force of worship to God. Mm. Although emotion play a place in the worship of God, but the main factor that should be governed the worship of God is the principle of love, not just an, an emotional experience, because an emotional experience has no root. It, it only has root in the flesh. at the beginning of time we are living not at the beginning of the world we are living in the last days of this earth's history and the bible says that in this generation that satan is making an attack greater on this generation than upon any other generation you see the devil understands the power of the youth the devil understands the power of the army of youth and so he says i must prevent them from becoming an army because if this is developed my kingdom is destroyed 